if we look at this example as a single extension from the rationals up to this big field here, in other words, if we look at it as a one-step thing, then the easiest way to find the degree of that extension is just to write out a generic element the way that we did it in all of its gory detail down here at the bottom. And then observe that if we can convince ourselves that they are linearly independent over the rationals, that the elements 1, 7 through to 3, 7 through to 9, 7 through to 27, 7 through to 81, 7 through to 243, 7 through to 729, in addition, all of those with eyes in front of them. In other words, each coefficient is attached to something. And if we erase those coefficients and turn it from a linear combination back into just a list, a set, if you like, then the elements in this set, if they are rationally independent, what can we call these? So we have these elements whose linear combinations make up our field. Let's call our field E so I don't have to keep mumbling its name. So we have a bunch of elements that span E and are linearly independent. Reach back to your linear algebra class. What does that make this? This combination of two things. Spanning and linear independence. Basis free. Basis free. Basis might be the single most important word in linear algebra. As far as, from a conceptual standpoint, what you carry forward into classes after linear algebra. So it's a basis for E over Q. And when I say over Q, I mean it's a basis for E as a vector space over the rational numbers, which is just because we had A, B, C, D, and so forth were all rationals before we erased them. Um, and once you know a basis, what else does that tell you about this vector space? It tells you the dimension. How? Yeah. The dimension equals the number of elements in a basis. Any basis is going to have the same number of elements, which is one of the interesting and non-trivial facts in linear algebra. But the, that then supports what Emmanuel said a little bit ago, that the degree of this extension is 14 over Q. And just so that we're using notation for this as well. When we talk of degree, we usually use this brackets notation. So the degree of E over Q is 14. That may not be a practical way to find the degree of one of these composite extensions every time. So is there a way we could have arrived at the number 14 in some other way? So taking a look at how I've written down all the basis elements down here at the bottom, what, what was 14 really? Seven times two. It was 7 times 2, with the 7 being, where do you see the 7? This. So there were seven of these seventh roots of three that are rationally independent, right? It begins with the seventh root of three. It goes all the way up through the seventh root of 729, and then it would come back to the seventh root of three to the seventh, which is equal to one, uh, which is equal to three, and therefore is part of the span of the number one. And so there are seven dimensions to what extension? So which extension would have degree seven according to this? Yeah, Q adjoined with the 7th root of 3 only over Q. That would be an extension of degree 7. And that explains why we have kind of seven columns on this list of our basis elements. What explains the 2? That second element, that I that was missing before. And so the degree of what extension is equal to 2? QI, yeah, Q would join I over Q. 
This is almost what we want. I just want to muddy the waters a little bit, but I don't want to muddy it too much because I want this point to, to sink in because we're going to use this a lot. The fact that the degree of this total extension is 7 times 2 is not an accident. It's something we call the Tower Law. Uh, and just this morning, I posted a video about the Tower Law um, that's connected to the last uh, slide of the video on splitting fields. Um, but just to make the point, let me get a blank slide for just a second. Right. Blank slide. OK. So it's actually not quite. If you look back at, at what we had over here, oops. it's not really q of i over q. That's the degree 2 extension that we want for this reason. So we start with q. Whoops. We start with q. And if we choose to extend by the 7th root of 3, then that extension, we've convinced ourselves, is an extension of degree 7. If I choose to extend q by i, then I get an extension of degree 2. By the way, can you quickly tell me minimal polynomials for these finite algebraic extensions? What's minimal for q adjoin i over q? t squared plus 1. Right. That is the lowest order polynomial. It has i as a root with rational coefficients. What about the 7th root of 3? t to the 7th minus 3. How come that's irreducible? Eisenstein with prime 3. OK, so there are minimal polynomials for those extensions. But then we have, ultimately, what I originally asked you about was this composite extension, q, adjoin both, right, the 7th root of 3 and i problem is that this 7 and this 2 don't give us a path from q to q adjoin both. What we really have instead is a path that leads us through one of these intermediate fields, and then subsequently we take our last step not by extending q, but by extending an extension of q. And when we do this, we build what's usually called a tower of extensions. Tower is an extension of an extension. And it might be two extensions, it might be three, it might be 12, however many times. If you do it more than once, you tend to call it a tower. And so let's see if we can talk ourselves into what are the minimal polynomials for these extensions. Because now each of the extensions on the right is a simple extension. This is a simple extension by what? What am I adjoining here? Yeah, I'm adjoining i. And what would a minimal polynomial be for i over the field q adjoin the 7 through to 3? t squared plus 1. It's a good guess. Um, so let's do the minimal polynomial check. Is i a root? Yes. Is it monic? Yes. Is this irreducible? How do we know that t squared plus 1 is irreducible over q adjoin the 7th root of 3? Uh, we can make the substitution t equals 1. Yeah, so Nick is, Nick is setting us up for Eisenstein, but Eisenstein only tells us whether something is irreducible over q. Rather, because this is quadratic, What's the only thing that we need to know about it in order to conclude that it's irreducible? Solutions. Right. Where do its solutions reside? Does it have a root in q adjoin the 7th root of 3? How do we know it doesn't?
because I is not rational. That, that explains why I doesn't belong back here. But how do we know that I doesn't reside here somehow? Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, Okay, so there's another thing that Q would join the 7 through to 3 only contains what kind of numbers? Rational numbers, but it also contains 7 roots of 3, right? the real 7 roots of 3. And so where does this field live? Of what is it a subfield? Yeah. It's a subfield of the reals, and I is not real which is why we know this doesn't have a root and Q would join the 7th root of 3. And therefore, t squared plus 1 is irreducible. And therefore, this is an extension of what degree? Yeah. So really, the 7 times 2 that we want is not the 7 and 2 on the left here, but rather... It's the 7 and 2 that cast this as an extension of an extension. This 7 and that 2. And the Tower Law, which is what this morning's video was on. The Tower Law says that this total extension, in other words, the big field over the small field, Q would join the 7 through to 3 and I as an extension of the rationals. Its degree is going to be equal to 7 times 2.